Here's the deal. We're about three and a half years into Genshin's total lifespan. We've traveled through five out of the seven nations. We've gotten about 17 new characters per patch cycle. And yet I still feel like we're missing some really important character archetypes in this game. Specifically, we're still missing some character archetypes that I really, really want to see. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about three characters that I desperately want to see get added to Genshin Impact. To get started, the first one I want to talk about is, for all intents and purposes, a dedicated Sino support. There's obviously a lot of characters in Genshin that I absolutely love. Kazuha, Wanderer, Yoimiya, Gaming, Farina, etc. But most of these, I feel, are in a pretty decent place in the game and in the meta. They have like good team members that let them shine, and they don't really feel super held back in any way. However, one of my absolute favorite units is still missing his ideal teammate. They ask you how you are. You Sino struggles from having immensely long burst uptime and relying heavily on Dendro application from off field. Nahida is obviously really, really good for him, but not being able to switch back to her in order to cast her skill when a new wave of enemies spawn makes Sino's burst flounder because it cancels it and then you don't get the energy back to recast it. Baiju is also a pretty good teammate for him, but his Dendro application is single target and Sino is very AoE, and his uptime is really, really tight with Sino's rotations. What Sino really needs is a character that can apply Dendro from off field in an AoE over a long span of time directly around him. And ideally, this character could have some sort of interruption resistance since Sino is a little squishy when he's on field without a shield. My pitch for this character is kind of like a Dendro Kuki Shinobu. Imagine, if you will, Kuki's skill, but it's Dendro. It applies the element periodically in an AoE around the active character and has a decently long uptime, even if it has to be through constellations. And by casting this character's skill right before initiating Sino's burst, you can ensure that it lasts the entire duration of his burst, applying Dendro roughly every 2.5 seconds. As for this character's burst, I think it would simply be something akin to Sing Cho's orbiting rain swords that he gets from his skill. I think giving this character a full shield on burst would be a little too close to like Baiju, and it would kind of challenge Baiju's position in the meta and what he can bring to a team. But at the same time, this character would have no healing to speak of, unlike Baiju who has some of the best healing in the game, so maybe that can be a bit of a trade-off. I'm trying to be relatively realistic here instead of like bloating a character with every ability under the sun. These quote unquote dendro rain swords would limit incoming damage on the active character and grant a hefty amount of interruption resistance, just like Syncho. Sino is fairly interruptible during his burst and is therefore best used with either a shielder or Sing Cho, since in a Hyper Bloom team he's going to want Hydro application anyway. But by consolidating the roles of Dendro Applicator and Defensive Utility, it would open up one more slot in a Sino team that could help him shine a little more. Again, in the name of fairness, this character would do practically next to no damage, similar to Kugi Shinobu, but would give Sino most of the utility that he desperately needs. I think this character would go on a team with Sino, Nahida, and Yelan slash Syncho for Hyper Bloom, and with Sino, Nahida, and Fischl for like a pure quicken Sino comp. Lastly, I think that like most support characters, this one would be best as a bow user since that weapon has the most supportive options. And honestly, I imagine them as a four star. I don't think this character has the kind of kit that screams five star to me. And I think that a lot of four star supports nowadays are decent at C0 and get really, really good in their intended niche at C6. And I think that this would be a good character for that kind of model, even though I don't really like it because pulling for a C6 four star is really difficult. <laughs> and this one can like maybe tie into Sino's backstory or just be from the desert, be familiar with Sino. Maybe this character knows Dia and Candice uh, and stuff like that. But yeah, that is my pitch for a dedicated Sino support. Please, Hoyo, you've done my boy so dirty ever since he dropped. Please give him something. Shifting gears now, I want to talk about a character archetype that we have been severely missing in the game. The fabled quote-unquote five-star Shangling. Our only two relevant off-field pyro applicators are the woman herself and Toma, who honestly is not even close to competitive, so we'll just disregard him, despite how much I love him. Sorry, babe. 
A 5 star version of Shang Liang would realistically honestly not do that much more damage than her since she is already completely busted, but they could at the very least be less obnoxious to use. The main detriment of using Shang Liang is that she is an energy black hole. Any team that wants her ends up spending half of its rotation spamming Bennett's E to get her burst back up. I use Child, I use Ayato, I use Linny, and honestly I am so tired of this little chef girl from Liyue being so damn needy. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I love you Shingling. But I would honestly take a version of her that does like half the damage but doesn't need to be batteried at all, like that's how frustrated I get using her on a team. Two more facets of her kit that we all hate are her skill, which is useless at best and maddeningly frustrating at worst, and her reliance on Bennett. These two should honestly just get married considering you barely see them apart. One way to make this character less energy hungry is to simply tie the pyro application part of their kit to their skill. That way they require no energy. Hooray! However, putting Shang Ling's pyro nato on a skill would be ridiculously OP, even if this character was like the pyro archon. Instead, I think this character could simply have a mini version of pyro nato attached to their skill that does significantly less damage, and then their burst simply buffs this skill to pyro nato levels of ridiculous. That way they are not completely useless without the burst, but still need to manage their energy well enough to make the most out of their kit. Additionally, since all off-field pyro damage would now count as skill damage, it could produce pyro energy particles throughout its duration, like a lot of off-field damage abilities do. Finally, her reliance on Bennett. A really simple way of making this character not rely on Bennett is by making them simply scale off of a different stat. Bennett only buffs attack, so if this character scaled off of like HP or energy recharge or hell, even defense, Bennett would simply not be useful for them and it would free him up to be used in a different team. We have a lot of HP scaling pyro characters already, so there is a precedent for that, and I admit that ER scaling wouldn't make a lot of sense when the character's main ability comes from their skill, even if the burst is still important, because it makes Emblem of Severed Fates honestly useless on them. Additionally, I do recognize that these changes make things like the Emblem Artifact set, the Catch Polearm, and other burst-oriented gear not as useful like they are for Shangling, but there's plenty of other busted options for them like Golden Troop and other skill-oriented gear. As for this character's weapon, I think that Sword would be good, honestly, because they can use the pipe, Floof Sandra, and there's a lot of DPS swords available that would benefit any high damage character. In general, the fact that we are three and a half years into the game and we still do not have any sort of competitive off-field pyro damage character, even close to the level of Shangling, is honestly really, really, really annoying. And I don't know why they haven't done it unless they are genuinely just waiting for the pyro archon. But even then, I feel like that's crazy. Almost every pyro character we've gotten since release is some sort of on-field pyro DPS. And it makes building teams that rely on pyro for reactions, but not as the main DPS, really, really frustrating to use. So yeah, please Hoyo, please give us the fabled Shangling rival. I am literally begging at this point. Finally, let's talk about the third character. This one is going to be a bit quicker since it's for an element that I think is already very, very well taken care of in terms of role coverage and a weapon type that I personally don't love. <laughs> As of making this video, we have every combination of weapon and element possible in the game except for one, Hydro Claymore. I think it would be fun to speculate on what a Hydro Claymore could possibly do. One big niche that I think Hydro is missing right now is a dedicated shielder. There are others, like HP Buffer, which would make Farina and Nuviet even more busted, or a forward Vape DPS, but I think Shielder is a much more basic role that should be filled ASAP. Additionally, I think it could be a fun gimmick to have a character whose like entire kit identity revolves around shields, making and breaking them. Maybe their skill does Hydro damage to enemies, and any enemy hurt by it is also marked. Enemies who are marked and are also shielded record how much damage is done to their shield over the next several seconds, and the more damage done, the more stacks the character builds up. Those stacks determine the strength of the shield the character creates with their burst. Basically, the character would have a low energy cost burst, probably 40 energy, that would have a decent shield by default but that shield would increase in HP if the teammate destroys enemy shields. Maybe the mark could even increase how much damage is done to shields by anyone on the team. One of the most annoying enemy types 
in the game, especially in Spiral Abyss, to me, are bosses that spend ages protected by an elemental shield. And having a character that specializes in destroying them more quickly could be a fun, if slightly off meta, option for more casual players. I wanted to include the character's weapon into the identity of their kit, and claymores are good at destroying physical objects and geo shields, so I wanted to introduce that sort of defense disabling aspect into their kit. And before anyone asks, even though I do see this character scaling off of HP, no, the bell is not going to be a good weapon for them. I need people to realize that the bell will never be a good weapon for anyone. Not because we don't have too many HP scaling claymores, but because the passive on the weapon is absolutely terrible. It's just outright useless. No character will ever want that passive, ever, period. Anyways, I wanted to propose a few character kits in Genshin that I feel we are sorely lacking. I really don't understand why, despite releasing so many characters a year, Hoyo refuses to address some of the pretty severe holes in role coverage in this game. We don't need any more pyro onfielders or defensive cryo units or damage oriented geo units. We need new archetypes to expand and diversify team building and introduce new variations of existing teams in case you don't want to use certain characters. <coughs> cough, cough, shangling. But what are some character archetypes that you want to see? Is there any character in the game that you feel is missing their perfect support? Let me know. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope it was fun, and I hope I explained my thoughts in a relatively coherent way. I would absolutely love to hear your thoughts on anything I said or any other characters you want to see added into the game in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, I would really, really appreciate a like. And if you enjoy this kind of content and other kind of content that I have on the channel, please consider subscribing. It would help me out a ton. I appreciate y'all so much, and I will see y'all next time. Later!